Hello everybody and welcome to Black and White Gaming. My name is John, aka Johnny Bag of Donuts, and thank you for watching what is going to be the first segment of many uh, called The First Four, where I played through four hours of a game and I'm going to give you the good, bad, and the ugly feedback. Today's game we're going to be looking at Call of Duty Black Ops 4, uh, specifically the blackout mode as I have not delved into the regular multiplayer. I'm a PUBG guy, so Battle Royale is where it's at. So we're going to just uh, see where it goes. Alright, let's dive into the good. So obviously this is a AAA production. And, you know, say what you want about the Call of Duty games, but quality development is something that they always bring to the table, and this game is no exception. Uh, you know, graphics, while they're not going to be the top tier, pushing the boundaries of anything, they are great, especially for a Battle Royale game. The draw distance is actually impressive, and the map overall is bright and colorful, so somewhere where you want to actually play. Um, I will say it's genuinely cool to see the snippets of the old maps in there, and you know, if you're not someone that's a BR player, and you're jumping in, you're not going to feel lost with those areas. As always, you're going to find smooth animation, and the vaulting parkouring here is very fluid, uh, so you can get around the map very easily. This game kind of feels like if Fortnite had a baby with PUBG, but just kidding because Call of Duty was the milkman and snuck in on the side. But uh, yeah, get a DNA test. Seriously though, it's a great looking BR game with very tight controls. Next, we're shifting over to gameplay mechanics. Um, one thing that I really liked in this was that you could move while metting. Um, allows you to be able to you know, retreat and stay in the fight, that way you can kind of heal and, and go. But it also forces you to push people if you're the one that's attacking. You kind of can't give them enough time to heal up and, and then uh, fight back with you. So uh, that's a nice little game mechanic. Mission objectives are green across the board. I also really like that uh, when you pick up guns from the ground, they're just automatically loaded. You don't have to do the PUBG style of getting the gun, getting the bullets, reloading it, and then by the time you're able to try to aim down sights, you're getting shot and killed. So that was a nice little change of pace where you just up and going right after picking everything up. Same thing goes for uh, the attachments for guns. It's nice to be able to just go up and uh, auto-equip them onto your gun. You know, you see a scope, boom, it's on your gun. You don't have to go in your menu, attach it. So it's very nice to kind of keep things moving, you know, ease of use type of, type of deal. One thing that I didn't really know too much about, I mean, I didn't play the beta when it came out, so I had really no idea going into it, but, um, you know, uh, the perk system with uh, it being something that you pick up off the ground as part of your loot. I was a little nervous thinking that it was going to be you have it in your inventory and it's equipped and essentially you have that perk for you know, however long you have it equipped for. Um, come to find out, it is a consumable, so it only lasts for a specific amount of time. Um, and none of them really feel too overpowered. There's definitely some that are more beneficial um, in certain situations. You know, Dead Silence is a pretty good one that I use very often. but. Um, it's a good system, and it feels like something you have to, you know, choose the right situation to do it for. So that was a, a pleasant surprise. All right, so it's time now to hit on the Circle bad. Um, first thing that comes to mind, the gunplay, while great, doesn't feel that varied. There's a lot of weapons, but a lack of differentiating between them. It kind of feels sometimes like a generic gun versus generic gun. Uh, it's probably something that'll change with more time into the game, but right out of the gate it just feels like a little bit of a samesies situation. Now while I do enjoy the map, it is a small map, and how the parachute system works, you can pretty much get to any location no matter what kind of flight path you have. Um, some might see that as a good and a positive, but having to technically pick a spot from the flight path is something I enjoyed in other BRs, um, and it's something that's kind of missing there. You just don't really feel like it has any meaning. You can just go wherever you please. Now, also with the, the map being so small, um, it is easy to traverse it, and you know there's a decent amount of vehicles that spawn throughout. I don't think the vehicles are that great, but um, you know, getting from point to point isn't that difficult. Which brings me to my next point, is that the 
the zone feels inconsequential for the most part. I mean, maybe I'm a god at Battle Royal. I'm not. Uh, but I have actually yet died from the zone and feel very little urgency to move away from it. I mean, it does push you to the next area, but uh, you can survive it. It's not really anything. It's kind of just, you know, forcing you to go. But most part, you're already there. It's not that big of a deal, and that kind of sucks. The final bad point, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, is that the game kind of just feels less tactical. Um, you know, I come from Camp PUBG, and the running gun nature of Call of Duty has carried over somewhat to Blackout. Um, it, it might be a preference thing, and it's not necessarily quote-unquote bad, but fights don't feel as threatening as they do in other in other VRs. Uh, you know, you're kind of just running around all willy-nilly, and you can just see someone, start firing, if they hit you, you can back up and heal. Um, I don't know, it's, it's less... It's less like you have to go in and tactically plan how you guys are going to, you know, take out the team. It's, you know, could be preference. It's just me. But I didn't really care for it. Anyone that knows me will tell you that I love dumping on things. So we're getting to my favorite part, the ugly. Um, now, one ugly thing in this game is the inventory management system. It is clunky and will most likely get you killed. Um, having to maneuver through your gear is awful and takes way too much time. You know, you have to hold the buttons to drop gear either in, into your inventory if you have room, which you're not going to have room because your backpack's way too small, um, or you drop it on the ground and then you're going to try to pick up stuff, you're going to pick up the wrong thing. It's awful. It's just going to, it takes way too long and it's going to get you killed because you're just staring at a menu trying to awkwardly put things in and out. Now this brings me to what is hands down the worst part of Black Ops Blackout, which is the sound. Now don't get me wrong, gun sounds are great, but you know in any BR game you're relying on the surrounding sounds to give you information. Um, one of the biggest offenders though are the footsteps. Your own footsteps are annoyingly loud as is, but if you're playing in a duos or, God forbid, squads, you are going to sound like a herd of buffalo trampling through the map. Now, don't worry, that's only affects what you hear because your enemy footsteps are quiet and it's almost impossible to differentiate between them or other sounds as like distant gunfire or a flag waving in the wind. You know, at no point should a flag trick me into thinking that there's a person next to me, all right? Uh, now, when you do hear enemy footsteps, you have a fairly difficult time figuring out if they're above, below, same level as you, all in all, it's just a very frustrating experience because y it's, you can't determine the direction that someone is coming at you, and that's if you can hear their footsteps. And I know some people are going to say, oh, they have the dead silence perk and, you know, you just can't hear them. Okay, maybe a few times, but this is an every game occurrence. And I think moving forward, this is going to be something that they really need to address because this is going to be something that's going to turn away the PUBG crowd versus maybe the, the Fortnite people. Um, you know, because, again, if you want to be tactical and try to go around, you're going to be listening for sounds and... It's super, super tough to do so. All right, and that's it for the first edition of the first four. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure to smash a like and subscribe. Um, you know, if you have any games coming up that maybe you want to uh, to see in this, let us know. Um, and thanks for checking out the video, and we'll catch you on the flippy flabby.